I'm Christy McAllister and welcome back to the fourth episode of the Women's Rugby League Show. This weekend we're looking at a grand final between two powerhouses in the women's game, Leeds Rhinos and York City Knights. Leeds Rhinos have improved massively over this season and a lot of that is down to their coach Lois Farcell. I caught up with her to preview the grand final but first let's take a look back at the epic semi against St Helens. Vicky Whitfield enters the field. Oh my word, I've seen her so many times change the momentum and flip games on the head just through hard direct carries. Alice Sandem on from the bench as well. Good ball from Rotherham. Rotherham's got Woozy away and Woozy will go in for St. Helens. The champions have the breakthrough. It's taken 25 minutes. But they were looking good for it. And St. Helens strike first in the semi-final. Brilliant from Rotherham. Woozy on the outside and cuts through and St Helens go ahead. Winfield Hill, I beg your pardon, gets the pass away and leads strike inside the opening six minutes second half. Sophie Robinson has put the ball down. It's Beavers with the carry but we love Caleb Beavers for doing this, getting him on the front foot Kyle. But look what it does there, that carry that's Zoe Harris, smart as well, picking out one of those defenders, knowing you're going to get a legs tackle off her, and off the back of that is Courtney Winfield Hill, just brilliant, squares up, introduces a winger into the corner. Kerrigan on the deck, well look there, Saints have replaced Hoyle with the juggernaut that is Vicky Whitfield and her direct carrier ability to beat the first girl and then just finds the floor and it's Kudjo then who knows there's a quick play of the ball coming and has to give away the penalty. And this kick now, 19 minutes away from a potential grand final, best dot. Still looking for a 37th goal of the Betfred Women's Super League campaign and she's just found it and that could be a big, big moment in the context of this game. Yes, it's only two points as Jody Cunningham applauds. Kudjo gives it to Winfield Hill. Looking for the oh! kick in the boxes. Robinson will score for the Rhinos. Sophie Robinson, the mistake from Partington. She shakes her head. Leeds have the try. And Sophie Robinson with her second of the game. And how big a moment in the destiny of this semi final will that try from Sophie Robinson prove to be? Almost. Into the last 30 seconds, Kudjo with the pass, Anderson, Anderson looking for the line, finds the post. It was 40 seconds, 20 seconds Kudjo. left. she's wrapped up, they won't care here Leeds, they just need to keep hold of the ball, that's all they need to do. Goldthorpe, Hornby, Hornby looking for it, Hornby looking for it, tries, she's got the oh. ball down I think. Hornby right at the end. Has she sealed this win for the Rhinos? The Hooter goes, it's all over, it doesn't matter. Look at the reaction from the Rhinos, look what it means to the lead players. What a win this has been. Hi Lois, so beating St Helens in the semi-finals must have made you incredibly proud of your team. Yeah, massively. Obviously, you know, treble, treble winners, they beat us in the uh, Challenge Cup final um, and, and beat us a couple of weeks uh, previous in the in the league game. So it were, you know, a big game, but that's what semi-finals and, and finals are all about is it's kind of like one last shot, who's going to who's gonna make it count and make the most of it. And I think that our girls really did that. Um, 
probably a few people wrote us off given the fact that we'd lost a few of the week previously with injuries. Um, but that's what we've looked at this year is everyone being accountable and, and bringing something to the team um, when, when they get an opportunity to play. And our girls massively did that. I think it were a, a good team performance and um, they showed some real grit and determination, which uh, were pleasing to see. You've now got League Champions York in the final. How have they impressed you so far this season? Um, yeah, look, they've been good. I, I know Lindsay well. Um, I've played with Lindsay at England level and I've worked with her as a coach in the EPU. And, um, you know, she's really passionate and I'm sure she's very similar to me in you know, terms of making sure there's no stone unturned. So she's, um, you know, she's got good attention to detail and I think that's, that's a good thing. We're quite similar in terms of they've got, you know, really um, striking players in attack and they've got girls who will turn up in D and, and we're very much the same. We've got, you know, threat across the park, which is what we say to our girls all the time. So it's going to be just a great game of rugby league where you've got to turn up for 80 minutes. It's going to get really tough and it's, you know, who's going to just pip it and um, and, and get out there and, and have a great performance. And, you know, that that's what it's all about is just a great game of rugby league. The women going at it for 80 minutes and seeing who can be the smarter, the stronger and, and, the, and the better team. Lois, you're still very young for a coach. How much do you think you've improved over the season? Yeah, I'm I'm only on the start of my journey as a coach, I would say. Um, I think this year I've I've probably been a little bit better because I weren't juggling it with having a newborn. Um, that was quite difficult last year. Um, really incredibly lucky to be supported by Anthony and David Gibbons and the rest of the support staff. They were absolutely class last year, but um, you know, it were very much a, a different year in terms of me transitioning from a player and also having a bit more on my play um, at home. Um, but this year it's kind of I've had that year under my belt. Um, a little bit more, you know, focused and clear vision. So yeah, we've certainly learned. We've learned more about each other. We've learned more about the game, um, and we're just looking forward to getting out there and having um, one last match together and, and embrace it. Really. York City Knights have been a club who've invested heavily over the past couple of years to create such a successful team. Playing at their stunning new stadium with a team packed full of internationals, they've impressed over the last few seasons. I caught up with star player Tamsin Renouf to see how they're getting on. But first, let's have a look back at their epic win in the semis against Wigan. The trouble here, Stanley. Well, that looks so oh, well. The man oh, no to the Gentles. It looked like she will score. Okay, could I have that slower please? She has got to catch hold and re-grip the ball. So really slow, really slow. Okay, I can see off that one. I am happy I've seen all available angles and I've made my decision. Here comes the decision. Is it a try? Is it the first try of the semi-final? No, it isn't. I do believe if we're going to gonna get anything out of this game, then they have to come up with something in good ball. We had four or five sets down there and come up with nothing as Peach goes away now. Yeah, she is one of the the danger signals, isn't she? As is the, the standoff, Georgie Hetherington. She comes down for Andrada. Andrada with the pace. Andrada with the try. And it's taken York less than 60 seconds to open the scoring in this semi final at the start of the second half. Tara Jane Stanley is looking at uh, another conversion. What a good kick that is. Tackle from Vicky Mullenew. She was yeah. very, very quickly up and apologising. And to be fair, Savannah and Drada just got up and got on with it. But a penalty to York. Um, here is Tara Jane Stanley, and that is certainly a big yes with the boots. And it is eight points to nil. Here is Tilly Butler. It has been really impressive since coming on. Three Wigan players to bring it down. Peach quickly from Dummy Hard. Peach 
gets the ball out, but she wasn't really looking where she was tackling, and uh, Basali it is who picks it up right in front of the post. Key moments in this semi-final, you feel. Dodd, Dodd with the pass out for Langham. Langham there for Kelsey Gentles, and Kelsey Gentles gets another try for the York City Knights. It had been coming at the start of the second half. Wilson. The tackle from Gale. And Lacey Owen. Kicked down Phil. It was hurried, but uh, it's standing. Well, if you've got to let it run into touch. Oh, it's a chance to go. And it's picked up here. And this is going to be a try for Wigan. Orianne Baville gets Wigan on the ball. And it is an all over. A rare, rare mistake from Tara Jane Stanley and the French star Lorian de Ville takes up the pieces and scores for Wigan. This year the Women's Super League has really seemed to have grown and the publicity that it's getting is very well deserved, would you agree? Yeah, 100%. Like, I've been playing in the Women's Super League since I was 16, like five years now. And the growth we've seen, like even managing to grow like through COVID and like everything, you think it would take a back step, but it hasn't. It's just been keeping growing and growing and growing. And I think in years to come, it's going to be like, wow, we're even at this stage, like women aren't being paid. Like in a few years time, we'll look back and think, I can't believe we ever did that. So I think, yeah, it's great to see that people are like so much more engaged. Like we've got a supporters bus coming to um, the game on Sunday, which like would never have happened. Like a club putting on a bus for a women's team. <laughs> To have supporters come and watch women play rugby would never happen years ago. You've already won the league. What has been the secret to your success so far this season? Yeah, I think obviously, like this year, it's we've been able to see how close we all are on the pitch, and it's I don't even know we haven't done anything special that we've never done before. It's just I think us as a group of players have just clicked really, really well, and it's just like fit into place. And I don't I don't think there's any manage, magic to it. It's just we've got such a young team and we're still developing so like we didn't expect to get to these finals this year we just wanted to grow as a team and um, make good progress and I think we've definitely done that and the, obviously the grand final on Sunday is just an added extra. You are up against Leeds on Sunday how tough do you think that's going to be? Um, Leeds are obviously a great team obviously um, they're missing Georgia Roach which is a big blow for them but they've got like strength in numbers through Courtney obviously leads them around the field if Courtney's on on point, I think the whole Leeds squad is on point. Um, Caitlin Beavis, obviously, um, she's opposite me. She's been playing centre this year, so obviously I look out, like, do a bit of preview on her to um, look out for her because she's going to be running at me. Who would you say the standout players have been for York this season? Um, well, it's great. Obviously, we've got three of the girls up for Woman of Steel. So we've got um, Tara, Sinead and Holly, and they've been three key players for us this year, like Peachy. Guides us around the pitch week in, week out. He's a great, great leader on the field. And I, we couldn't have done a lot of this without her. Obviously, Tara's just got a bit of flair. Like, no one ever knows what she's going to do. Like, even her teammates don't know sometimes. And Holly's just a grafter. Like, she will go in and in and in. But I think, in general, our forward pack this year have just been key to us. And if they're on form, us backs can play off the back of that. And, um, yeah, I just think we're gelling great as a team, really. And, there's no one specifically like obviously the three girls who have got um, nominated have done a fair job, but I think they've all said like without each other we couldn't have done any of this. It's just like a family. Like I can't explain how how close we all are and how much desire we have on the pitch for each other. And I just think that's going to keep growing year on year. And it's just the start of our journey. This in the end. Tamsin, if you do win on Sunday, how are you planning on celebrating? Oh, well, I've got a flight to Lanzarote at 5.55 the next morning, so <laughs> that'd be one way. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time, Tamsin. We really appreciate it. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today, but make sure that you do tune in to the Women's Grand Final this Sunday as it promises to be an absolute belter. I'm Christy McAllister. Thank you for watching. This has been the Women's Rugby League Show. See you next time.